Hello mga ka Buttercup! If you are new to our channel, please like and subscribe. Enjoy the rest of the video! Tremendous day to everyone! I am Kathleen Gil Rodriguez, one of the group 4 members, and today, please allow me to discuss to you all about Ketugnet. The phylum Ketugnata. Ketugnats are marine animals known as arrowworms with 130 known species. They resemble miniature torpedoes and are adapted for planktonic existence. Exceptions include a benthic genus and a few deep ocean floor species. And they swim to the surface at night and descend during daytime, which basically means that they can be seen only at night. So if you want to see one, then go search for it at night. Then they can dart forward quickly using their caudal fin and longitudinal muscles. And the horizontal fins boarding the truck serve as stabilizers for flotation. The in here shown is a uh, body structure of a of an arrowworm. So arrowworms are typically hermaphroditic, which means they both uh, it has both female and male organs. So you can observe that it has an ovary, oviduct testis. So, ang kanin grasping spines niya, muna siya responsible sa pag grab o inject of very large organisms. Then, ang kanin iyahang central ganglion, muna siya, muna dira ang synaptic relay stations between sa neurons. Then, ang kanin caudal fin, kaya siya mo help sa organism to racket through the water. Then, apo siya female gonoflor, anus, which ang um, waste to secrete seminal vesicle. So, form and function. Our worms, also known as ketognats and marine animals with hundreds of known species, they have a head, trunk, and postural tail, and they are unsegmented, compared to annelids, which they have a segmented body parts. Their body includes a large depression called a vestibule, which contains teeth and spines used to seize prey. They also have a pair of eyes and a hood that can be drawn over the head and spines. They also have a complete digestive system with a coelom and are voracious predators. Voracious meaning they eat very large amounts of food. No? So, dako kayo sila kaon. They feed on planktonic forms such as cop cop copipods cop or copepods, crustaceans, small fish, and other ketognats. Another one is that they have a thin cuticle covering their body, a nervous system with a nerve ring, and sense organs such as eyes, sensory bristles, and a possible ciliary loop. And they use vibrations of the sensory bristles to detect prey. So, mo lang gamito and detect the prey of vibrations. And fun fact is that they lack ex respiratory and excretory system and rely on diffusion alone. No? So, mo na siya. And they have a loosely organized hemal system and are hermaphroditic with either reciprocal or self-fertilization. So, hermaphroditic mo to siya. Na ang both male and female organs. And they are juvenile, and the juveniles develop directly into a without metamorphosis. Moving on to the next phylum, let's talk all about phylum Cynotorbellieta. The phylum Cynotorbellieta contains a single genus, Cynotorbellia, with two species, X bucky and X west bloody. They are yellowish in color, worm-like, ciliated animals that were first described in 1949 but have been slow to find a taxonomic home. They have been placed with turbellaria flatworms and mollusks. The body has few distinct morphological features but two furrows 
are visible externally. The pores may have a sensory function because they overlie thickenings in the diffuse nerve net. The phylum Cynotorbillieda body is not cephalized, meaning they are connected as one, as you can observe in the picture. It has a mouth that opens in the middle of the flattened ventral body surface and leads into a blind cut. There are four tissue layers, including a muscular layer with radial, circular, and longitudinal muscles. There are no structured gonads, but sexual reproduction do occur. Sinotorbelia has direct development similar to that of acylomorph flatworms. There is no feeding larval stage. The studies of mitochondrial genes and gene order suggest it belongs within deuterostomia, but some molecular phylogeny suggests it may be placed at the base of Bellatoria or within the deuterostomes. And that would be the end. Let me call in the next reporter, Diane, to, to discuss all about the echinoderms. Hello, I am Tess to report about clade Ambulacraria. Ambulacraria is a superphylum that contains two deutrostome phyla, which is Echinodermata and Hemochordata. So, Echinoderms, including sea stars, brittle stars, and sea Cucumbers are familiar to many people, but hemichordates, including acorn worms and fascia branch, are much less familiar. Echoderms, we have sea star. Most sea stars have five arms or rays and breathe through the small gills in their skin. And also, their mouths are located in the under skies of their mouth. Next is we have brittle star. Brittle star has a distinct central disc and five skinny flexible arms, which we can see in that picture right part. There is this flexible arms, and then the central disc is made up of a skeleton of calcium carbonate and contains all the internal organs. Brittle star's arms twist and coil to help them move across the seafloor. Next is we have sea cucumber. It has long, elongated, cucumber-like bodies that are thickest in the middle. So this one right here, the orange one. Um, they have distinct front and rear ends with ten finger-like tentacles around their mouth. The hairy sea is dull brown and grows four to five inches long. It is fat, rounded body is covered with tube feet. Next is the characteristics of echinoderms. Echinoderms have a tiny spiny skins. They live in marine habitat. They don't have brain, few specialized sensory organs, sensory system. They have radial symmetry. Excretory organs are absent. Skeletal elements connected by ligaments of mutable cholestitious under neural control. Ligaments can be locked into rigid position, or relax to allow free movement at a wheel. Locomotion by tube feet, which, pro which projects from umbilical areas, by the movement of spines or by movement of arms, which project from central disc of body. There are more than 500 or 5,000 species of echinoderms. Next is we have the characteristics of hemochordata. The hemochordata or the hemochordates is a worm-like, thus they are commonly called worm animals. They have a bilaterally symmetrical body and a triploblastic in nature. They have a collar and trunk are the three main parts of the body. Gill slits are present that perforate the pharynx. Examples of hemochordates is the psychodera. They almost have similar to balanoglossus in various aspects, but the color and proboscis in pythocodera is much smaller than the balagnoglossus. They have a gonads in genital wings in trap region. Next is we have the cephalodiscus. 
they live in colonial form in the gelatinous matrix known as conicium, which are attached to the surface of a sea floor. Next, we have Alobaria. They live in colonial form, and each zooids are 1 to 5 millimeters in size. Collars have four pairs of tentaculated arms. Next is we have Radopleura. They live in colonial form, several horizontal and vertical gelatinous tube form colonial. And then they have the small size zoids present and posterior end of each zoids are connected to a common black stolen through living connections. Under the pylum of Echinodermata is the asteroids. Aster means star, oids means in the form of. They are commonly called starfishes and are familiar along the shoreline where large numbers may aggregate on rocks. Sahai. Matapot na sila o gugot gali kayo. And then, the only thing you can do to remove them is to tear off some among coral reefs. Usually, mabot to 5 up to 40 long arms. And they are often brightly colored and range in size from a centimeter in greatest diameter to about a meter across. And isa sa mga defense mechanism nila is ang mag-regenerate. And simple ra kayo. Mostly the predators kay ilang target man kay ang arm sa starfish. And then ila rapot lang gali ilang kaugalingon na arm and then the unwary predators kay may bilin ra ang katong arm na iyang gipaakt sa starfish kay mula kaw na to regenerate new arms. Simple ra kayo. So for the forms and functions Sea stars are composed of a central disk. Their mouth is surrounded by a soft peristomial membrane. So, ang ambulacral area runs from the mouth on the oral side of the each arm to the tip of the arm. And if mas dagan ilang arms, mas dagan ang ilang ambu ambulacral areas. And so, an ab ambulacral groove is found along the middle of each ambulacral area. And the grub is bordered by rows of tube feet or pudia. These in turn are usually protected by movable spines. A large radial ner nerve can be seen in the center of each ambulacral grub between the rows of tube feet. And their body is somewhat flattened, flexible, and covered with a ciliated, pigmented epidermis. Okay. Sisters have a hydraulic water vascular system with internal water canals connected to the tube feet via muscular sacs. Ampula, ampulae to operate them for locomotion. The vascular system also distributes nutrients and waste products and has a major role in the respiration. It has a connection to the outside through the madriporite opening on the dorsal side and the lung blood system is reduced no? Res and respiration is accomplished by skin, gills, papillae <clears throat> on the surface of epidermis na asli nervous system pero wala sila brain and light sensitive eye spots may occur at the tip of the arms And sisters are invertebrates, so wala sila backbone, but they do have a skeleton beneath their skin. This endoskeleton is made up of a complex network of hard bony plates made of a calcium, carbonate, and monoglot together by strong flexible tissues. For the circulatory system, sisters have a very unusual circulatory system circulatory system they do not pump they do not pump blood around their bodies but instead they use sea water and a complex water vascular system to keep things moving and they their tube feet are also used for movement 
and an important part of this circulatory system. For the nervous system, as I said earlier, wala sila ay nervous system, no? But they have something, I mean, they don't have a nervous, uh, ner a central nervous system, but they have something uh, called a uh, nerve net, which is basically just all their ner nerves are spread over their whole body. But they can still move in a coordinated di directional manner. So they'll have parts of their body which are detecting a stimulus and they will move towards that or move away from it if it's something they want to go or to go to or something that's annoying them. And for the reproductive system, a steroid idea may produce sexually or asexually. There are male and female sisters but they are indistinguishable from one another. These animals can reproduce sexually by releasing sperm or eggs into the water, which once more fertilize, okay, they will become free swimming larvae that later settle to the ocean bottom. That's all. Andropylum echinodermata is opioidea. They have over 2,000 extant species, and all are marines. They abound in all types of benthic marine habitats, even carpeting the abyssal seafloor in many areas. And opioids are car carnivores, filter feeders, and scavengers. There are two types of starfish under the class Opioidea, the beetle stars and the basket stars. I will differentiate the two. Brittle stars have only five arms, but basket stars have far have arms that branch repeatedly. Brittle stars have very fragile looking, form like arms, and basket stars have a series of branching arms resembling a basket. The central the central disc of a brittle stars and basket stars is usually relatively small, under one inch. And the whole organism itself may be under an inch in size. The arms of some species can be quite long, though, with some basket stars measuring over three feet across when their arms are extended. These very flexible animals can curl themselves into a tight ball when they are threatened or disturbed. The mouth is located on the animal's underside or oral side <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> these animals have a relatively simple digestive system that is made up of short esophagus and a sac like stomach opioids do not have an anus so ang ilang ways is mapagawa sa nila sa ilang mouth and for the forms and functions although both have five arms beetle stars are surprisingly different from asteroids Wala sila papilay and ilang ambulacra gloves kay closed and covered gani with arm of sickles and like sa asteroids. Their tube feet are without suckers. They eat in feeding but are limited uh, use in locomotion. In contrast to asteroids, the madriporate of opioids opi opi is located on the oral surface on one of the oral shield ossicles and each joint in arms consists of a column of articulated ossicles so called vertebra nga nag connect nga connected siya by muscles and covered by plates ang um, locomotion is by arm movement and here uh, he here uh, Ang arms nila are moved forward in pairs and are placed against the substratum while one or anyone is extended for forward or trailed behind and the animal is pulled or pushed along in a jerky fashion. Brittle stars have a water vascular system. They twist and bend their long arms to move. Instead, this means that they can move they can move much more quickly than sea stars, especially when trying to escape a predator. 
ang nilang ang excretory system is ang gas exchange and excretion occur through cilia line sacs called bursae. Each opens into the interambulacral area of the oral surface of the desk and typically there are 10 per animal. The gonads are located in the desk. Sexes are separated in most species. Gametes are shed into the water by way of porcel sacs. And the, first, and the fertilization may result in a free swimming larva called opioploteus, which undergoes metamorphosis without an attachment stage. However, many opero operoids brood their young, commonly in the bursae. But all in all, the water, vascular, nervous, and hemal systems are similar to those of sea stars. It's each arm contains a small coilum and a radial nerve and a radial canal of the water vascular system. That's all for the class of Peroidea. Good day everyone. This would be Nina Faith Nunez Arnisin. And for today's video, I'm going to talk about the class Echinoidea. So the best example of this one, there is the Ophorothorax, the Ophorax, or the Beta Star. If I'm not mistaken of um, how I pronounce this one. So, um, let's proceed. Um, Echinoida comes from the word Econos, meaning tiny. No? So, um, the best example of this one is the brittle star. So, brittle star, this one, the brittle star. So, brittle star or brittle sea star is common name for ichnoderms belonging to the class of Rhodia. The names come the name comes from their habit of breaking of arms as a defense to the distract and to distract predators while the sea stars uh, sea star escape. It's not much of a loss because they can regenerate new arms easily. While most common starfish have tubes under their limbs that move the entire body. Brittle sea star use their slender and mobile arms to drag their body across the ocean. Because of this movement, they are sometimes called serpent stars because their slender arms are snake-like. No? So, brittle stars larvae are small, ridge, and transparent. Some have colorful tint to them, such a dull blue or orange, but for the most part, they are clear. Brit brittle star larvae are arguably one of the most strange-looking larvae, and some, and some say they resemble small fishes. The number of arms on each side of the larvae sometimes determine how far along into development they are. If they have two arms, they are very young. Then they develop six and then eight arms. So, have you ever wondered why is it called brittle star? No, for my own understanding, they are named brittle star because of their ability to break off an arms in order to escape predators. No, so, um, let's proceed to this one. How they eat? So, we're not um, the same as species, uh, the, the same as um, this brittle star, of course, or human. So, I, me myself, I'm of um, of course curious about how they eat. No, so brittle star is of passive suspension feeders. No, they are suspension feeders. No, of course. And are they important to our ecosystem? Are they um, uh, brought huge impact to our ecosystem? Let's discuss if they are. No? Why they are important? Brittle star play an important role in Arctic food web. Why? First. Let me tell you about this. First, 
they are known to be seafloor ecosystem engineers. They reshape the seafloor sediment surface and influence the, dis the distribution of other seafloor species. They also provide nutrition to fish, sea stars, and crab predation predators. No? So, brittle star have very important ecological role in the functioning of the ocean in both their adult and larvae form. They serve as food for big commercial fish. There is even evidence to suggest that large beads of brittle star improve the quality to, um, of coastal waters by eating massive amounts of floating nutrients in the water. Some scientists even believe that they help counteract the effect of purification when humans put excess nutrients into the water. No, so each um, each brittle star have a distinct central disc and five skinny flexible arms. The central disc is made up of a skeleton of calcium carbonate and contains all the internal organs. Brittle star arms twist and call to help them more across the sea floor. So now this is what they um their their um zoom in um sa ilang mouth part. So they have the here the desk, the jaw located here, the jaw located here, the mouth, the borsal slit, the oral shield, um, arm spines, and the ventral arm plate. So um, let's talk a little about of how they um, how they um, the 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 digestions of brittle star. So like sea stars, brittle stars have their mouth on the underside. On the underside. They filter sand and mud from the ocean floor feeding on detritus. Their digestive system is quite simple. They have a stomach but no intestine or anus. So any waste, any waste that they eat is excreted from the mouth. So this is the mouth. They have the close ambulacrum, the bursal slit, the mouth here, located here, and then the center one. This, this is the central disc and the arm. No, so um that. I think that ah this one this one have you ever um have you ever wondered what is the difference between the brittle star and starfish they looks like a star but they have a difference so no for um um we know that starfish starfish and brittle star are exclusively marine echinoderms. The key difference between starfish and brittle star is the mode of movement. No, so after this one, I'll be playing a uh, some videos, some videos f um of how they move and of course how they eat. So starfish use uses two feet for the movement, whereas brittle star move using their long arms. Additionally, the starfish has a complete digestive system with both mouth and anus. So, I'll be playing a video, some video of this one. Okay. Brittle stars are kind of them. Although they are closely related to starfish, brittle stars like a crocodile, more slender versions of a starfish.
A Britain star has a distinct central disc and five skinny, flexible arms, which may reach up to 60 centimeters in length. The central disc is a skeleton made of calcium carbonate that contains all the internal organs like mouth, jaws, and stomach. Brittle stars are either scavengers or predators. Their two feet help gather the food and transfer them to their mouth. Because they don't have any intestine or anus, any undigested material they eat is expelled from the mouth. Their five arms twist and coil to help them move at the bottom of the sea. But that's not only the thing they can help with. They can release one or more arms to avoid predators. As long as the brittle stars can hold on their centuries, they can continue to function and the missing arms will regenerate. Brittle stars are sensitive to light. They hide under rocks and even within other living organisms. They also inhabit the dark high pressure environments on the floor of the abyss of zone. Brittle stars are known to be bioluminescent. The light is used to detect predators. Some brittle stars reproduce sexually by releasing eggs and sperm into the water. Holothorodia, known as the sea cucumber. No, they live. They live in marine environment. Sea cucumbers are found in um, virtually or all, all marine environment throughout the world, from shallow to deep sea environment. Sea cucumbers are benthic, meaning they live in the ocean floor. However, their larvae and pla are planktonic, mo meaning they float in the ocean with the current. No. So, their respiration. Sea cucumbers extract oxygen from water in a pair of respiratory trees that branch in the clo cloaca just inside the anus so that they breathe by drawing water in through the anus and then expelling it. No. So we have here the digest digestion. As expansion on deposit feeders, um, holothorians trap particles and plankton on um, mucus covered tentacles. The tentacles are pushed into the mouth to ingest food. So here, 
not one. And then their contributions ecosystem. They reduce organic load and redistribute surface sediment. They have around 1,100 described extant species. Let's talk. The main stem of a plant or the narrow stem that joins joins leaves. Flowers or fruit they to the main stem the of a plant. A Example is imong body, which is mo inagunit sa imong ulo, well, the ants of the ale. feather star or comatolids, which are members of the largest crinoid order, comatolida. So crinoids or echinoderms in the pylum echinodermata, which also includes the starfish, starfish. Brittle star, sea orchids, and sea cucumber. So, and they live in both shallow water and in depths as great as 9,000 meters to 30,000. Form and functions of sea lilies. So, sea lilies, despite their name, are from form errant plants. They're animals related to starfish and sea orchids with long feathery arms. Resting atop a stalk that keeps them anchored to the to the ocean floor. Sea lilies can crawl with a speed of three to four centimeters per second. They use it to avoid predators like sea orchids. Sea lilies usually occur on deep waters where they feed on detrit detritus. So and detritus is dead and decaying matter, including the waste of organism. It is composed of organic material resulting from the fragmentation and decomposition of plants and animals after they die. Mara siya guhugaw ng gikan sa plants or animals. Example ka na, kaon kag slice bread niya na ay nangahulog nga pinupino sa pan. Or debris, scattered pieces of waste, ka na mara siya, that is called detritus. So, stalk. The main stem of a plant or the narrow stem that join, joins leaves, flowers, or fruit to the main stem of a plant. Example is imong body which is mainagunit sa imong ulo, kamot og tiil. Form and function sa feather star is kuan. Siya which is opposite sa sililis kay unstock siya pero natay gitawag nga metamorphosis which means change in form. So ang feather star na ay possibility nga mustok ang sisail. So sisail means permanently attached dili siya siya ka walk or crawl. Adaptive diversification Echinoderms also called echinoids have five full radial symmetry. A common example is the modern sand dollar. Echinoderms are characterized by a unique col- columnic water vascular system. This is a hydraulically controlled system consisting of a circumoral ring around the esophagus with connecting radial canals, each leading to an ambulac- ambulacrum. It helps locomotion, the capture of food, and respiration. It helps in locomotion, that capture of food, and respiration. Symmetry, the condition of having similar parts regularly arranged around the central axis. And the water vascular is, this is a system of vessel in echinoderms containing a circulating watery fluid that is used especially for the movement of tentacles and tube feet. So, ang endi- endoskeleton is kanang nag-base sa cartilage that may be replaced by bone, whereas the dermoskeleton consists primarily of dentin and bone. And the echoderms have diversified within the therimbetic refers to anything associated with or occurring in the bottom of the body of water. The animals and plants that live on or in the bethic habitat, they are bottom are know, are known as a benthos. Large number of creeping creeping po- forms 
with filter feeding. Here, the phylum. Here, the phylum. Um, I have to call this one the phylum hemichordata. The phylum hemichordata. No, it the um, hemichordata looks like this. This one. So the phylum hemichordata are the marine animals formerly considered a subphylum of chordate based on their position of grills, clips, and a rudimentary knot cord. So hemichordates are vermiform bottom drillers living usually in swallow waters. Some colonial species live in secreted seeds. So it, it looks like this. We have the feeding feeding appendages, the entrotical mouth, the anus, the um how to call this one, the proxy proxicel, um what's one? Uh, this one, the list would drill, we have the anus located here, the acicolum located here, this one, this uh, this one, we have the mouth here the right foot drill, the dorsal enter integument, the steel, the are uh, marginals, okay, that one, and the characteristic of phylum hemichordata. We have the body divided into proboscis, collar, and trunk, the buccal di the reticulum and posterior part of proboscis. No, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 characteristic of phylum hemocardita. So, I think um, that could be, that would be all for today's video. And I hope you have, uh, you have uh, learner, learn learnings about, of, what I've tackled earlier and until okay that would be all for today's um, video I hope um, I hope you gain um, at least a small knowledge of this discussion have a nice day ahead everyone thank you and now Let's tackle about the characteristics of phylum hemichord data. Number one, the body is divided into proboscis, collar, and trunk. Proboscis meaning it's their extensible tubular sucking organ. Two, interrupt free moving and varying habits. Three, free living. Four, bilaterally symmetrical and soft bodied. And five, triploblastic, meaning that it consists of three germ layers, six single ceramic pouch and proboscis, but paired pouches in collar trunk, seven, ciliated epidermis, eight, complete digestive system, nine, longitudinal and circular muscles in body wall, ten, a subepidermal nervous plexus thickened to form dorsal and ventral nerve cords with a ring connective in the collar. Some species with hollow dorsal nerve cord. 11. The sensory neurons in proboscis likely function in chemoreception. So, what kind of chemoreception? It's ability to perceive specific chemical stimuli. 12. Colonies form by a sexual body in therobronts, a sexual reproduction by fragmentation and etheropness. 13. Sexes separate and interrupnista, with gonads projecting into body cavity. And 14, a single glomerulus connected to blood vessels may have excretory function and is considered a metanephridium. And lastly, respiratory and filter. Next, we have phylogeny and the adaptive diversification. Phylogeny, echinoderms left an extensive fossil record and evolved about 26 atomically distinct body forms, which account for 20 currently recognized classes. Members of were extinct. Members of the most classes were extinct by the end of Paleozoic era, and only five classes survive today. 
based on their larvae and newly discovered bilaterally symmetrical fossil forms, it appears that ancestral echinoderms were bilateral and that there are three pairs of spaces. Two major clades of ancient echinoderms developed and bilateral and deposit feeding, and the other rad radially symmetrical and suspension feeding. So next we have the ad adaptive diversification. Diversification of echinoderms has been limited by their most important characters. Radial symmetry, water vascular system, and dermal endoskeleton. If their ancestors had a brain and specialized sense organs, these were lost in adoption of a radial symmetry. Only now are genes expression studies beginning to help researchers identify structures such as the anterior, posterior axis, and adult echinoderms. The best evidence currently available suggests that the oral surface is anterior and the aberral surface is posterior. Under this hypothesis, the arms represents lateral growth zones. Echinoderms have diversified within the benthic habitat. These are large numbers of cubing forms with filter feeding, deposit feeding, scavenging, and herbivorous habitats, and, and very rare pelagic forms. Next, we have the taxonomy. There are about 7,000 living and 20,000 extinct or fossil species, as said earlier, in echinoderms or echinodermata, the traditional taxonomy placed all three moving forms that were moving forms that were originated with oral slide down in subphylum contains mostly living species. The other subphylum, Palmatozoa, contained mostly forms with stems and oral side up, most extinct classes. And leaving Pinodia belongs to this group. Although alternative schemes have strong supporters, cladistic analysis provides this evidence that the two traditional subphyla are monophyletic. This list includes only groups with leaving members.